Steam-powered locomotives were once a common sight on railroads around the world. Boiling water to make steam is an effective way to turn fuel into power. In fact, we still use steam today to power electric utility plants all around the world as an economic way to make more than 75% of our electricity. When water boils, it turns into a vapor called steam. This process converts heat energy from fire into pressure energy, which can be used to turn turbines or push pistons. This energy can move very large objects like steam locomotives. This is a detailed cutaway view of Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis locomotive number 576. 576 is a 484 locomotive, which means there are four leading wheels, eight driving wheels, and four trailing wheels. The leading and trailing wheels help distribute the heavy weight of the locomotive and guide it more smoothly through turns. Steam locomotives are miniature power plants. They process stored energy from wood, coal, or oil and convert it to kinetic energy by boiling water. Fuel and water are stored behind the locomotive in a special rail car called the tender. Water is pumped over to the locomotive to make sure that there's enough of it to make steam. Fuel is put into the firebox to maintain a fire that boils the water. This is the firebox, where a fireman keeps a roaring fire which heats the water to make steam. It's really important to manage the water supply in the boiler too. If the water were to get too low, excessive heat from the fire could melt the firebox. The fire gets its fresh air through the floor of the firebox, which also keeps the grate on the bottom of the fire cool so that they don't melt. The heat from the fire and the smoke is pulled forward through the flues. The heat from the fire goes into the water through the walls of the firebox and the flues as it flows toward the smokestack. Flues are the tubes of metal that go through the boiler to create more surface area for the water to absorb the heat from the fire. As the water boils, steam rises since water is much heavier than steam. The steam gathers at the top of the boiler in a bulge called the steam dome. To try and get the steam without water drops or wet mist, steam is gathered from the highest point possible. In some steam engines like 576, the steam is sent through a superheater. The steam goes back through the boiler in smaller tubes that are surrounded by the extreme heat from the fire. This makes sure that there are no water drops in the steam. The steam expands more and makes the locomotive use less water overall. Any leftover water caught in the steam can vaporize and become usable steam pressure. Water drops that don't turn into steam would be wasted energy. At this point, the steam is very hot, dry, and ready to move the train. When the engineer is ready to go, he puts the reversing lever in the forward position so that the main steam valve is in the right position to move, then he slowly opens the throttle valve so that more steam can flow into the pistons. As the piston pushes the main rod, it connects to only one wheel. This wheel is connected to the other main wheels through a long connecting rod. That makes the locomotive move, but the important parts that make it all work are the rods that are connected to the valve. This adjustable lever pushes the main steam valve back and forth at the right timing to tell the high pressure steam where to go. Each time the piston gets all the way to one end, the valve changes and it also lets the used steam out of the side that is now all the way extended. When the high pressure steam gets released after pushing the piston, it shoots up through the smoke box and out the smokestack, making the very recognizable chugging sound of a steam engine every time the piston changes direction. When the steam shoots through the smoke box and out the smokestack, its velocity pulls some air in the smoke box with it. And it turns the smoke box into a vacuum, just like a vacuum cleaner. This is called the Bernoulli effect. It causes a draft on the fire, and the fresh air going into the firebox makes the fire hotter. If the locomotive is not moving, the fireman can turn on steam jets that shoot steam directly up and out the smokestack, creating an artificial draft on the fire. Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis, number 576, is a 484 J3 class steam locomotive, also known as a Dixie or Northern, built by the American Locomotive Company in August of 1942. 576 served for 10 years moving passengers and freight during and after World War II. She was retired with the rest of her class in 1952 as diesel locomotives became more economical and practical to use. 
576 was the only one to survive the cutting torch and was donated to the city of Nashville in 1953. It was placed on public display for the next 66 years in Centennial Park. In 2019, the Nashville Steam Preservation Society raised funding to begin a complete restoration project and moved the locomotive over roads and by rail to the Tennessee Central Railway Museum, where it is being restored to safely operate under steam as it once did and pull exciting excursion trains as an interactive live demonstration of historic railroad past. You've seen an incredible cutaway view of how a big steam locomotive like 576 converts fuel into steam and then steam into locomotion to pull freight and people to their destination.